Uh, Mr. Grostev, many commentators are quite surprised that the Russian army so far was not able to overrun Ukraine, uh, to take Kiev and to break, uh, to break the Ukrainian resistance. Are you surprised too? Yeah, I was surprised because uh, there was a lot of predictions, including by the American intelligence, that in three days uh, the Russians can do it. But the truth is that I was probably less surprised than the Russian leadership because one of the worst things in politics is to become the victim of your own propaganda. And this is what happened, in my view, with uh, the Russian leadership in this case. They really believed that the Ukrainians are just waiting for them as the liberators, and they discovered that they have been welcomed as uh, occupators. What was or what is Vladimir Putin's plan with this war? What is he trying to achieve? President Putin in July of uh, last year wrote an essay, uh, and this was an essay that he really wrote, not simply signed, in which he basically claimed that Ukraine and Russia are the same people, and he came with the idea of a historic Russia that includes at least part of Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine, Belarus, Russia. So he was trying to see himself as a unifier of the Russian lands. In his imagination, and don't forget that he was in Germany in 1990, not in Soviet Union, Ukraine was kind of an East Germany, just waited to reunify with Russia. So when he basically started this operation, his major idea was to try to basically recreate a Russian uh, political space. It does not mean that Ukraine is going to become formally part of Russia, but he basically believed that he's going to come up with a pro-Russian Ukraine. And even if this was going to be on the price of the division of Ukraine, he was ready to do it. The Israeli historian Joval Harari says Putin has already lost this war uh, because he won't be able to occupy, to subjugate or to annex Ukraine. Is he right? Yeah, he's absolutely right. Uh, in a certain way, the most important, and I do believe that President Putin really believed it, was that he really believes that the pro-Western orientation of Ukraine is fake, that there was some pro-Western and West-paid elites, but the Ukrainian population is just waiting for the Russian army in order to go back home. So what is happening for him is not simply that he lost the war, but he lost his understanding of what is Ukraine. Because you're seeing people on the street which are not particularly well armed, that are not particularly well trained, uh, but just their presence with arms in their hands means that they believe that Ukraine is not Russia. Uh, one could even argue that uh, Putin has accomplished the very opposite of what he was trying to achieve. He has pushed Ukraine uh, even more to the West than ever before. Uh, he has unified the West in an unprecedented uh, way from unheard of uh, sanctions uh, to an unequaled uh, military buildup in Germany, uh, obviously, uh, to the shipment of arms even from neutral Sweden. Uh, yeah, somebody who was re recently tweeted uh, that by attacking uh, Ukraine, uh, Mr. Putin achieved three things that probably he does not like. The unity of Europe, he killed the neutrality of Sweden and the pacifism of Germany. And the major story was that basically this war, in a way like the pandemics, accelerated the perception of the people that we are living in a world very different than the world of yesterday. So suddenly, and this was very visible in Germany, all kinds of a traditional perceptions that Germany is not ready to sell arms, that military power doesn't matter, everything is about economic power and soft power, all this has changed. And from this point of view, suddenly, uh, over a period of several days, Europeans look at the world in a totally different way. This reminds me very much of uh, the way, for example, people in the 1920s and 30s, they have been always thinking about, about their time as a post-war, about uh, because of World War I was where they start from. And then when historians look at this same period, they see it as a pre-war. So this kind of a moment in which you start to view your own time very differently, this is what this war achieved. And from this point of view, this was really very different, in my view, uh, than the Russian president expected. But uh, how can Putin get out of this conflict now? It's hardly conceivable uh, that after three weeks he'll say, OK, I tried it, it uh, didn't work, we'll go home again. Uh, how can his endgame look like? No, this, is, this, is the really, uh, this is the really difficult question. Uh, because he started the war with one expectation, now the situation is changed. And what you're doing now is you're much more escalating, probably in the hope to de-escalate, 
But what happened now is at the moment when it became clear that uh, this war cannot be simply won by the special forces and by kind of a special operations in Kiev, uh, the Russian president did something that has not been done in Europe for a long time. And this is basically referring uh, to the possibility of nuclear weapons of being used. And this is also one of those moments that I found uh, extremely, extremely dangerous because you have uh, a situation that in many respects reminds us of the situation of the beginning of the wars for the dissolution of Yugoslavia. And if you're listening to uh, President uh, Putin, in many ways he sounds like President Milosevic, but the big difference is that uh, you have a nuclear power and uh, this existence of the nuclear power makes the situation very difficult. Of course, the compromise is possible, and I'm sure that the Ukrainian government will be ready uh, to basically declare, declare that they don't have an interest uh, to join NATO if the Russian troops are going to withdraw. But then the question is from where the Russian troops are ready to withdraw what they're going to do with the recognition of the Donbas republics. So from this point of view, we're really in a difficult situation because you have a nuclear power uh, that basically put itself in the corner. And Mr. Putin uh, wants victory, but honestly speaking, victory which neither the Ukrainians nor the Western publics are ready to give to him. So we are, we're in, a, in my view, in a really dangerous situation now. But is it really conceivable that Russia deploys nuclear weapons in this conflict? Listen, uh, no, I believe it's a very low probability. Uh, but there is one thing that was uh, typical even for the last days of the Cold War and not, even, not only about the post-1989 period. You have a nuclear weapons, but you don't talk about them. Uh, it was after the Caribbean crisis that everybody knows how well armed the other side is, but you're never threatening with the nuclear. And from this point of view, what happened in this war in which, from the point of view of people being killed, of course, cannot be compared uh, with many of the wars that we have witnessed, totally uncomparable at this moment to what happened in uh, former Yugoslavia. And to be fair, the Russian forces have been asked now to be very careful and uh, not to, to have much more casualties because the idea of Russians killing Ukrainians does not appeal to the Russian society. But suddenly, you have the president of Russia who start talking about nukes. And this is a shock, particularly for the younger generation, which probably some of them even don't know the meaning of the word nuclear weapons. And this is, of course, a psychological pressure on Ukraine, psychological pressure on uh, uh, the West. Uh, but the moment you start talk about these things, the conversation changes. And of course, the sanctions which the West put on Russia uh, uh, in the last 24 hours are unprecedented in their severity. Uh, and it is also tried to see to what extent Mr. Putin is going to look at them also not as an attempt for regime change in Russia. Uh, you personally know Mr. Putin. Uh, he was always thought of as extremely ruthless, but as rational. Is he still rational from your point of view? Yeah, listen, we don't know. People change, and for sure, Mr. Putin is, uh, was very strategic, was at least very successful tactically in many respects. But people that have been seeing him recently, they always say one and the same things. Talk, take very literally what he's saying. If you have been watching basically the passion with which he was speaking on the night he was announcing the special operation, uh, we have a person that has been very much transformed and we can speculate of the sources of his transfor uh, transformation. It could be probably also the COVID isolation. It could be the feeling that he's not a young man anymore and he wants to fix the problems of Russia when he's alive. Uh, but at least till now, even when there was this streak of messianism on Mr. Putin, we always were sure that it is quite risk averse messianism. Uh, but we don't know how it's going to be because till now Mr. Putin tended to be quite successful in many of his adventures. So we don't know how good loser he is. At, at the moment, the situation in Ukraine does not look good for him. So is it going to intensify how far he can go? And of course, this is also a major, basically, uh, major pressure on the Western politicians because on one level, they should be effective enough not to allow Mr. Putin to achieve what he wanted. On the other side, they should be cautious enough not to trigger an even bigger and more dangerous crisis. 
Last question from today's point of view. Are you rather optimistic or pessimistic? I have my fears that situation can get out of control. Uh, but there is one thing that we should also keep in mind. This war in Ukraine is not Russia's war. This is very much Putin's war. This is very much the war of a particular generation of Russian security services who never managed to reconcile themselves with the end of the Cold War and basically the disintegration of the country they have been meant to protect. So from this point of view, I don't know how this war is going to resonate with the Russian population. This is not Crimea. After the annexation of Crimea, we can like it or dislike it, there was a lot of genuine enthusiasm on the Russian side. Russians has the feeling that they are on the just side. This is not what I see today. And from this point of view, there are going to be internal pressure and external pressure. And I very much hope that uh, President Putin can find a way basically to get out of this situation without escalating much. But it's not going to be easier neither for him nor for Ukrainians. And also the war can really get worse because, because before it gets better. So this question about optimism and pessimism, you should never ask a Bulgarian to answer these questions. We're not very famous for our optimism. Ivan Gostev, thanks so much for your time.